it was a lovely little introduction. It laid out, you know, the the things I've done, the the things I do. Um, to know, however, the the true me is to know that, uh, as an economist, my purpose in life is to leave you miserable. <laughs> That's what we do, and and so uh, it's a considerable shock to to my system to be standing here today and talking about the good news. Uh, and the news really is good. I'm going to talk about um, the world and Australia, uh, but close to home uh, for you guys. You, you just heard it from Peter. You heard it from Barnaby. Um, a whole bunch of numbers are good. And that, of course, wasn't the expectation for 2017. There was a bit of uh, fear and maybe a touch of loathing um, around what might happen given that you know, the political world around the world has been really quite volatile uh, in the last year or so. Um, but we began 2017 with a really strong message. We said this will be a year that's going to be better than you think. And the key reason is because politics is absolutely not economics. And the things that hog the headlines most of the time are genuinely not making, well, you know, Barnaby put it well, they're not making you richer, they're not making you poorer. You know, we're fascinated. Uh, it, we may be in an era of reality TV, but some of the stuff that's going on at the political level uh, these days is just even better. You know, you can't wait for the latest tweet. But it doesn't matter as much as you might think it does. It truly doesn't. And, and you know, US economy is getting better, uh, by the way. And that was happening and it will continue to happen for a bunch of uh, basic reasons, the fundamentals, as economists like to call them. Um, but the thing I would call out is actually China. China has been throwing the kitchen sink uh, at its economy for a while now, and that pace stepped up over the last year, and as a result, the pace of China's own economy uh, stepped up. And you are seeing that in a burst of a growth uh, that's really quite striking in Australian national income. Um, this is a very different uh, year. Um, there are some costs, of course. I can you know, leave a little aftershock of misery with you. Um, because good times always have their trade-offs uh, in, in economics. And a period of greater prosperity in 2017 will be exactly that. Will be a period in which the Australian dollar will stay relatively high, uh, and you won't see further interest rate cuts. Economists were talking about them. We've stopped talking about them, and we're starting to talk about uh, interest rates as being likely to go up. All right, now how can I explain this to you? How can I show it to you? are uh, all in one chart. Well, I absolutely should not be showing you this chart. Um, I spend my life forecasting real GDP, the output, the quantities produced in a you know, number of houses uh, that we build, um, tons of wheat, kilos of beef. Um, but the amount you produce is really not that real. I mean, we, we, we got the national accounts the other day and people were saying, oh, you know, are, are we going to see a, a recession? It's not actually the relevant measure. Whether you're thinking of an economy, whether you're thinking of the business uh, that you work in, income uh, is much, much more important. Yes, you know, um, treasuries, treasurers, budgets, you know, you, you'll hear a lot uh, about this sort of thing. I'd actually draw your attention to this. The green you can think of, green is national income, but you can think of it as the revenue growth for Australia Proprietary Limited. Um, as a nation, across a long period of time there, it averaged about 5.5% extra a year. Then we had a, a resources boom, a China boom. A truly remarkable period, and that was enough to raise that average, the growth in the green. You know, we, we went from about five and a half to just over 7%, uh, 7.1. And then China slowed, coal and, and iron ore prices came down, energy prices came down more broadly, you felt some pain 
uh, out there in agricultural markets around the world uh, as well. And you'll see the green you know, across the last five years. Now, you heard economists talk about Australia was having an income recession. Right? The growth in national income was not that good. In fact, you take the, uh, the national income, there, you, you strip out inflation, you remember that we've got a growing population. If you put it uh, in inflation-adjusted per head terms, living standards in Australia were falling from late 2011 onwards. Uh, and that, you know, and we saw that pain in our political world as compromise got harder and harder to get. The good news, look at the green. Um, in, in technical terms, the correct, uh, the correct jargon is wooshka. All right. um, the world is suddenly, mostly, do, you know, yes, the news is good uh, in, in the US. Bad things have not happened uh, in Europe. Um, China in particular, though, the combination means the world is throwing money uh, at us again. Um, and that's a truly remarkable thing. Now, as I said, you know, there are some risks uh, around that and some short-term costs. You'll see the green doesn't stay magnificent forever, but it stays rather better than it has been. Let me talk through some of those things, uh, but beginning with the obvious point that when things are better or indeed worse, the, the Australian dollar acts as a gigantic bumper bar. And, and the dollar can annoy a lot of people in the farm sector, can annoy a lot of people in a lot of sectors. But for the nation as a whole, our floating currency has been a thing of beauty. It really has. You know, so, so when times are bad, the dollar goes down, and that gives us a bit of a cushion. And when times are good, and again, 2017 is a year of prosperity. Other things equal, you know, the Australian dollar uh, is a little bit higher uh, as a result of that. Now, we don't expect it to, we hope it doesn't rise any higher, uh, further still uh, in 2070. But if it does, it will be rising because of other good, hang on, we're just taking photos of me. Right. <laughs> uh, too slow. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I may have lived in Canberra too long. Um, the, uh, uh, if the dollar does rise further from here, chances are it would be because of net good news uh, in Australia. Or look at the story around interest rates. Uh, you can see that peak ahead of the global financial crisis. Uh, and you know went way down and the GFC bounced back up. But the broad story is that across a decade in Australia, interest rates have been moving lower. Uh, and and um, in the last handful of years, that was China's slowdown, you know, and there was all that story there. And, and Australia deliberately went, you know, we made this choice to go from a China boom to a house price boom. Uh, and, and now that particular story is, is running its course. Um, we don't expect to see uh, interest rates go down any further in 27. And we, we don't actually expect them to go up yet. But again, if they go up, it will be because of other good news, broadly good news stories out there in the economy. Roll on, uh, 2018, 2019, you can expect interest rates to go up. And I can tell you that reasonably safely. Uh, because that chart just goes back a, a handful of years. Uh, and if you put a bit of context uh, around it, you look at US interest rates, the fundamental driver of, of the cost of money uh, around the world. And you um, put that chart back a couple of hundred years. You realize just how bizarre your lifetimes uh, have been. Uh, for most of you, your adulthood has been a phase of falling interest rates. They peaked. Uh, in the early 80s there in, in the US. And they fell for the bulk of that time for a good reason. You know, in, inflation had gone too high and economists you know, figured out how to bring it down and, and that was good. Um, but since the global financial crisis, interest rates have been going down even further for essentially crisis reasons. It's pedal to the metal stuff. You know, banks are hurling out all this free, free money um, and it has helped economies a bit, um, but it's hurt in some ways too. Uh, and, and a crisis doesn't last forever, and that repair phase, anyway, again, you know, the US, the underlying, the fundamentals in the US continuing uh, to look better. Our expectation 
would be that the US will raise rates three times, maybe even four times uh, this year. And you know, it may start in the US, but it will eventually uh, spread around the world and, and perhaps to Australia um, come uh, 2018 and 2019. Or in other words, you can't rely on interest rates to remain as magnificent as they are. The key, the other key, uh, to 2017, and the other key caveat, therefore, remember that a lot of what's good now in current conditions is off the back of China throwing money uh, at its economy, it's stimulus, right? and, and that's fine. Uh, and trust me, that's going to last through 2017. There's a sort of a, a big political meeting uh, and, and type of a reshuffle due uh, in China at the end of the year, uh, and that will keep the politicians there. Um, absolutely focused on having that economy moving fast through 2017. Um, but most people don't, you know, as Australians, we've never quite understood China. And, and uh, to understand that, let me put it this way. China has done, um, has followed, in effect, the, the only successful get-rich-quick scheme that the world's ever seen. And, and this is already an, an old story uh, in Asia itself. The East Asian growth model, well, Japan did it first, but then you had the Koreas and the Taiwans and the Singapores and, uh, and a bunch of others of them. Um, it works. How do you go from poor to, if not rich, then well along the way in just a handful of years when much of the world seems to take a number of decades? Um, and the answer is, you build, right? You know, as, as the first generation starts to, to scrape t some money together, you don't spend it on yourself, right? You spend it on, on building stuff, uh, the roads, the, the factories, uh, and the rest of it, and on educating the kids. And that combination, you know, that investment in the future is remarkably successful in transforming economies. And, and you know, the reason Australia's been the most successful get rich. Uh, sorry, most successful rich nation in the world in the last third of a century is, is at least in part the last decade of that we've been slipstreaming what's happened in China. That is a brilliant way for China, for Asia to get richer, but it has a bit of a problem because eventually you reach a phase where you've built too much. Uh, and, and the share of uh, your economy that goes to business investment, investing in the future, you know, again, dominated by construction, um, you know, you, you, you're building uh, empty shopping malls and, and airports that aren't used much and, and empty apartments and, and the like, and you increasingly rely on debt uh, to do it. So the other caveat, uh, that's China way over on the right-hand side of the chart. By the way, it's Chad on the left. Never go to Chad. Um, China still has a transition. It's building stuff that it doesn't actually need. And that stuff isn't making money. And China is an America, and, and there is further transition ahead. Not a disaster, but it will be an ongoing change. You know, that, that story in China hasn't finished yet. So let me finish. 2017 will be a lovely year. You know, and, and it was always building to be a better year than people realised, in part because the political reality uh, show of, of uh, global politics, the train wreck, we can't tear our eyes away from it, but it's not what drives economies, right? And the good news is that you can see it in, in the leading indicators of world trade, global uh, industrial production, including manufacturing itself. You can see it now in the, the trade accounts as Australia boasts trade surpluses um, every month, and there's a chance that we might even get to a current account surplus uh, for the first time since the early 1970s. Things are afoot. There's a lot of prosperity uh, afoot. Enjoy 2070. Yes, there are risks, interest rate risks, you know, there are exchange rate risks, and down the track, China transition risks. But it's a lovely year. Uh, enjoy it very much. Thank you. <laughs>